so much for joining us today. I'm Pastor David Smith of the Monroe Church of God. We're so delighted that you've tuned into our program this afternoon, and I just know that God's got a word for you as you watch the broadcast. Let me encourage you, if this program's being a blessing to you, to let us know. You can go to our website at monroecog.net, and from there you can link on to our email and our contact information. You can send us a, a card or a letter. You can contact us by phone or send an email to us, and we'd just like to hear from you and know that this program is being a blessing to you. We'd also like to invite you to come and be a part of one of our worship services very soon. We meet every Sunday morning. We worship twice on Sunday morning, 9.30 and 11.15. On Sunday night, we have different opportunities for worship and discipleship, Christian education, including activities for children and a dynamic youth program and a full youth service every Sunday night at 6 o'clock. And then on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, we come together for our family worship experience. You want to be a part of one of those services and connect with us very, very soon. Monroe is easy to get to just off Highway 78 between Atlanta and Athens, and I know you'll be excited to be a part of what God is doing here at the church Love is Building, Monroe Church of God. We want to take you now into a live service uh, recently at the Monroe Church of God. I know that God has a word for you. As you watch this program today, I pray that you'll open your heart and receive what God is saying to you today. God bless you. I'll be right back at the end of the message to share a little more with you. Now let's go into the service. Mark chapter 9, verse 50. It says, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourself and have peace one with another. Let's read that one more time. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, Wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourself and have peace one with another. Now, would you turn back? Let's go back to the previous book of Matthew chapter 9. Look at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 17. It says, Neither do men put new wine in old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine in new bottles, and both are preserved. Neither do men put new wine in old bottles. If you do, the bottles break, and the wine runs out, and the bottles perish, but they put new wine in new bottles, and both are preserved. Now I want us to go to our text in 2 Kings chapter 2, and I want us to read four or five verses there. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19. It says, And then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the ground is barren. Look at verse 20. And he said, bring me a new bowl or a new vessel and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Verse 21. Then he went out to the source of the water and cast in the salt there and said, thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. I want to speak to us for a few moments this morning on the subject, vessels of revival. Vessels of revival. Would you just join me in prayer this morning? Vessels of revival. I believe that inside the church, there is another church. What do I mean by that? I, I believe that God has always had a remnant. There's always been a nation within a nation, a people within a people, a church within a church. Throughout the Bible, we see that through people like Daniel. When the whole world at that time was bowing their knees to an evil king, Daniel refused to cease praying. He prayed three times a day, and the Bible says he prayed until the answer was dispatched from heaven, and the answer, and the answer came. He was thrown in the lion's den, but he refused to stop praying. There's always been a remnant. There's always been a Shadrach, a Meshach, and a Bendigo that even when the king said, if you do not bow, you're going to be thrown into a fiery furnace that would look at the king and say, we will not bow, and if we must burn, we must burn, but we will not bow to a pagan king, for our only king is Jehovah. There's always been a remnant. There's always been a Moses. There's always been an Elijah. There's always been an Elisha. God has always had a remnant. <laughs> The Bible says in Mark chapter 9 and verse 50 that we read, it talks about salt. And it's Jesus that's giving us this statement that salt is good. But if the salt has lost its savor and its saltiness, then it's not good for anything. And salt, we know, is a preserving agent. 
We know that it preserves and it cures, if you want to use that term. Uh, salt gives something flavor. It gives it taste. But we know primarily that salt is given to preserve. And I believe, as, as Christ parallels salt to the church, he says salt is good because I believe that the remnant, the church of the living God, regardless of what denominational title you put above that, if you're a part of the body of Christ, we are called the salt of the earth. It is the church of the living God that is preserving this world. This nation, this world is in a mess. It is wicked, and it's getting more wicked as the days go by. But it is the church of the living God that is the, the preserving ingredient within this world that stays back the judgment of God. I'm persuaded that with the wickedness that is in this earth today, that God's judgment would surely have already been passed if it were not for the fact that the church is the preserving agent. God stays his judgment because of the power and the authority and the grace that lives and abides within his church. And so in Acts chapter 2, we, now we're Pentecostal, and we, we always, I always say if you're Pentecostal, you ought to open your Bible up and it ought to fall open to Acts chapter 2 because we talk a lot about the empowering promise of the Father, that he gave us the Holy Spirit to empower us, to be witnesses, and to walk in the authority of Christ on this earth. And through the Holy Spirit, he established the New Testament church. And in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were all with one accord, in one place. It says they were all with one accord. All. There was a revival in the land, but it all started when 120, a remnant of the crowd said, we will not bow and we're going we're gonna to press into what God has for us. So the Bible says in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 47 talks about that Ezekiel saw a river. The prophet Ezekiel saw a river and the scripture says that it was a river that flowed from the throne of God. It didn't come from some denominational headquarters. It came from the throne of God. And so it says that when it flowed from heaven, from the throne, it flowed into the remnant of people, and then it flowed into the masses. In Acts chapter 2, the 120 got it before the thousands were saved. The 120 got it before Simon Peter ever preached that powerful uh, declaration that he preached that's recorded in Acts chapter 2. And so Ezekiel saw this river, and he saw the river that flowed in its banks, and there were trees along the banks, and there were leaves on the trees, and the Bible says that the leaves on those trees were for the healing of the nations. Now, all through scriptures, trees always represent people. Well, if trees represent people, then their branches surely represent the healing of the nations. That's why that James 4 tells us, is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. We did that this morning. And let them anoint them with oil, lay hands on the sick, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So the healing of the trees, the limbs of the trees, the branches were for the healing of the nations. And so we lay hands on the sick believing that God is able to heal. And so in Mark chapter 9 it says salt is good. And then Turn back with me over to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 17, and I want to read that passage one more time. It says, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. If you do, the bottles will break, and the wine runs out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. What God is saying there is that when new wine comes, it will, if you don't, preserve the old wineskins and put them through the restoration process, if you try to put something new in something old, in old methods and old uh, routines, then it will cause damage to the product. You see, you, that's why you you got to watch trying to uh, sometimes be critical if something new begins to happen because it could be the it could be that it's God doing this new thing. As a matter of fact, God says in Isaiah, Behold, I will do a new thing, and it will spring forth speedily. <laughs> now that doesn't mean that the new thing will be contrary or in contrast to the Word of God. That new thing has to line up with the Word of God. What it means is a new outpouring, a new refreshing, a new sense of God's presence. 
And sometimes if we're not careful, God will bring in his spirit and because it doesn't come with the song we thought that it should move in or the sermon or the preacher or the singer it should move in or the method, let me say it like this. It could be, and I pray God send revival, not only to Monroe Church of God, but to this region, to this city. And if God's going to do that, I say, God, I don't care if it starts through the pastor of the church. I don't care if it starts in children's church. I don't care if it starts up in the youth group on Sunday night. I don't care if it starts on our street ministry. I'm saying God just somehow spark a revival in this church and in this city. Can I get an amen? And you see, if you're here this morning and you sense, I just don't feel God like I used to. I just don't sense his presence like I used to. I just don't have that feeling in my life like I used to. May I submit to you this morning in all love that it's not because God doesn't have the power. And it's not because God doesn't still love you. And it's not because God is not still doing miracles. It is because somewhere along the way you have become disconnected from the power source. And until you track that down and trace it down and find where you got disconnected, then you're going to be trying to live a lifeless, powerless life before the Lord. But God says we can reconnect. It may be where you quit praying. Go back and plug in again. It could be when you quit going to church and being faithful. Plug back in again and know that God has a plan for your life. Amen? I'm ready to shed some old wineskins and say, God, do in me what you would have to, have to do in my life. You see, Elisha talks about a bottle. In this story, there was an issue with the water. And there was a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. They had all the, the facilities. They had trees. They had a river. They had tools. They had all that stuff. But there was a problem with the production. You see, the church is the bottle. We are the container. The the Bible talks about Jeremiah going to the potter's house. I've made reference to that a couple times this morning. God sent Jeremiah to the potter's house, and he showed the potter working on the wheel, and he said, this is a vessel. You're a vessel. And he talked about the vessel, and the vessel become marred, and he made it over into a new vessel. And the Bible says, Paul tells us in Corinthians that we have this this treasure in earthen vessels, and we're referred to as vessels. We have a treasure in vessels of clay. And I believe that sometimes we forget that we're just the vessel. I believe what God is wanting to do is do a work in the vessel so that we can be what God's called us to be. I believe God is up to something. I believe in these last days before the coming of the Lord, I believe he's gathering people from every church. This is, we're church of God, and I thank God for my heritage. That's why I'm here. But I'm going to tell you, this thing that God's wanting to do is bigger than church of God. It's bigger than assembly of God. It's bigger than Baptist and Methodist and Christian church and church of Christ. It's bigger than all that. This thing is about the body of Christ. It's not about a name or a title above the door. I've got all the certificates hanging in my wall. I serve as a district overseer for our denomination. I serve on a a couple of boards for our church, and I love our church, but let me just stand here and tell you, and I'd say it if our bishop was sitting on the front row. We thank God we're in the pond, but we're not the only fish in the pond. We're a part of the body of Christ, and when we get a kingdom mindset and realize God's called us all as a body of Christ to be a part of what he wants to do in this last day. And when we understand that, then we'll know that God is gathering a people. Now, why did Elisha ask, Elijah request a bottle, a new bottle? Why didn't he just get a a handful of salt? You know, I already laid that foundation that salt is a preserving agent. It creates permanence. Why did he not just get a handful of salt? Because God is preparing a vessel into which he can pour into what he wants to be poured out of. God wants to put something in you that he can pour out of you. Now hear me, I'm I'm in my introduction, but my message is way shorter than my introduction, I promise. God is wanting to put something in you that he can pour out of you. God is looking for a church that'll do more than just be a consumer mentality. God didn't bring you here today just because it's your obligation, because you're, if you're a member of this church, if I asked you, why are you in church today? Somebody may say, well, I'm here because I'm a member of this church and I made a commitment that I'd be faithful in church attendance. And that's admirable. I thank you for being here. Some would say the reason I'm here today is because I've got a position in the church and this is my week to serve as an usher or a greeter or in the sound or in the choir and this is my time to serve and that's why I'm here. And I appreciate your honesty and your faithfulness. Others will say, well, it's Sunday morning. My mama taught me that on Sunday morning I need to be in church and I'm here because I love my mama. 
And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. But let me submit this to you. The reason that we should be here today is because we are vessels of God. And he wants to fill us with a treasure called the Holy Spirit so that when we leave this place, these earthen vessels are filled with his spirit so that everybody we come in contact with, because how many realize the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord? God has a purpose for you this week. He's going to direct your steps, and there's some places you're going to go that God wants to use you as a vessel. And so he has to pour into us what he wants to pour out of us. That's why he said, though your outward man perish, your inward man is renewed day by day. We're the vessel. He said, the paths of the righteous grow brighter and brighter. He says he's changing us from glory to glory to glory because God is pouring something out on somebody that can pour it out on the masses. That's why he filled up 120 so they could go pour out on the multitudes. And so God has you here today to pour out into you and to fill you up so that out of your belly can flow rivers of living water so that everywhere you go and everybody you meet and everybody you touch and everybody you have an opportunity to come in contact with, you're not empty but you're full. And I'm here today to get filled with all that he has for me because sometimes this week somebody's going to come in my path and I'm going to be able to pour into them what he's poured into me that's why God wants to pour into us what we can pour out into others amen we're a vessel see Elijah, Elijah said bring me a vessel I believe God is I believe God is wanting to repair some things let's just say it Georgia vernacular he wanted to fix some stuff he's wanting to fix some things that that we have we have neglected. You see, we, we get our eyes on the bottle, and we think that the bottle is the answer. And I've grown up in the church all my life, and, and we begin to focus. Listen, if we're not careful, we as a church become so consumer mindset, have such a consumer mindset in this age that we live in that we come to church just like we're going to McDonald's. And we want, we want what we want. We want it in the time that we can get it. We want it just right. We want it just the right temperature. And the customer service better be good. Am I preaching? And we come to church with that mentality. We want good customer service. We want a good product. And we want it in an hour and a half to two hours. And we want everything. We come because we want something that's good for our kids. We want the sound to be just right. We want the pews and the chairs to be just right. Amen. Pastor Durden was telling me this past week they sat in a $10,000 chair. Now, how would you like to have one of those? Wouldn't that, we would get everybody to church. $10,000 chair. We've got to have everything just comfortable, just right. Just co- See, and we become this consumer mentality because we've got this ideology now that what we need from God is in the bottle. But it's not the bottle. It's what's in the bottle that makes a difference. Elijah said, bring me a vessel, bring me a bottle or a vessel of that that I can pour into something that I can pour out of that's going to really make the difference. It's not the bottles. Let me tell you, I'm the pastor of this church. And I appreciate, a few weeks ago you had Pastor Appreciation Day. We were honored. You blessed us, made us feel better than what we are. It was great. I cried and hugged you and loved you and love you more than ever, and all that's good. But I'm going to tell you something today. I'm going to give you a little secret. God can live without me, and he could live without you. If, if, if something happened where I had to be moved out of the way, God put somebody else in here. He would have a man for that season or a woman that would come in here and be able to do what he's called to do. It's not about me. And here's where it gets real personal, if you all can handle it. It's not about you. We're just vessels. This morning as I was getting ready to preach this message, I was sitting in the chair and I was looking over the scripture and looking over my notes that I'd made. And as I'm sitting there thinking about this bottle and thinking about this message, I looked up on my mantle and I saw two bottles, two big bottles that my wife had bought. My wife likes to go, Kim likes to go to antique stores and she likes pottery and bottles. And let me just tell you something. That stuff is not cheap. I I tell her sometimes, why do you just want to buy pottery and bottles? And I'm looking at those bottles this morning, and I was reminded of those two particular bottles because when she brought those bottles home, the first one home, 
I told her, I said, you do know what kind of bottle those are, don't you? And see, she's always been saved. I hadn't always been saved. Little humor there. So she was naive. She didn't know what they were. And I said, that bottle is a wine bottle. It's a big wine bottle. And that bottle is a whiskey bottle. Now, they didn't have labels on them. They're just pretty bottles. And she said, well, I just like the bottle. And so we've got a whiskey bottle and a wine bottle sitting on it. Now, they got flowers in them, and some of you wouldn't know if I didn't tell you, but I recognize what they were. Now, I'm saying that to make a point because one of those bottles, when she first got it, I didn't know what she paid for that bottle, and, and I'm, I'm always saving my change. I don't like carrying loose change in my dress pants pocket, so if I've got change, I'll just walk by and drop it in something, and that looked like a good bottle to do that with. I didn't know she'd paid $60 for that bottle, so I'm just dropping my change in there, and, and, and those of you that know me, you know I am, the best word that I like to use is frugal. I'm frugal. And so we have went on vacation before with the loose change we saved. And so I'm saving change. I'm putting it in that bottle. I think that's a good purpose for this bottle. And about halfway through that process, the Lord spoke to me. And I'd, I'd been putting dollar bills and loose change and coins and all that. Now, now, let me tell you, anybody that would like to investigate my house, there is no bottle full of money at this point. Make that clear for those watching on TV. <laughs> but at this time, we had this bottle, and it started filling up. There was some money in there. And we had a mission project going on at church. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to take the money that's in that bottle, which is becoming a significant amount of money, I want you to take the money that's in that bottle, and when it comes time to give in this mission offering, go cash that money in, in that bottle and give that to this mission offering. Now, I want you to watch this with me. That bottle had been created to contain something that could cause disease in your body. If you drank too much of it and get in a car, it could cross the line and you could kill somebody. That thing contains something that has destroyed marriages and destroyed lives. That's what was inside that bottle. But it's not about the bottle. It's not the bottle's fault because what happened was it got emptied of all of that stuff and when I started putting the money in it, and God said, we're going to use that to send the gospel around the world and support a missionary to preach the gospel, God converted that, vo that bottle from one thing, which was something evil, into another thing, which was something righteous. Now, I want to tell you this morning that God has taken these vessels, and I'll just talk about this particular one. There's a vessel before you that was filled with wickedness and rebellion and sin and unrighteousness, but God emptied. It's not the bottle. This old bottle looks the same. I have the same hair color, little highlights, but almost the same hair color. I've got the same color eyes. I've got the same facial features. It's still David Smith. But inside this bottle, he emptied out all the things that were displeasing to him. And he said, bring to me another bottle. And here I am. And he said, I'm going to fill that bottle with something that can change the world. And he filled me with his spirit and with his grace. And thank God, it's not just the bottle, but he wants to put inside of you what he wants to pour out of you. Amen. Can you give God praise this morning? You see... Notice what he said. I'm, I'm going to hasten to a close. Notice what he said. The prophet said, first of all, bring me a bottle. I believe that's what God's saying this morning. You want to change this world? You want to see this thing turn around? I believe in every house there are vessels, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. It's not the vessel. It is the content. We're coming to a time where I believe that the waters are going to flow. I know that there's a scattered revival all over the world, but I believe God is wanting to pour out his spirit. I am confident that God is wanting to pour out his spirit in these last days before the coming of the Lord. And I believe God wants to give us a word that will get us, get us out of this up again, down again, in again, out again, shout again, doubt again type of relationship with God. God wants to get us focused and God wants to get us on track. Amen. There's a group of people I believe that are looking for revival. They're looking for a touch from God. They're looking for a change. They're saying, God, fill me with your presence and your power. Let me make a difference in this world. Don't let me just go through the motions. Don't let me just show up and leave and leave the church just like I came to church. I pray today that there are some vessels here that'll say, God, I want you to empty me of everything that goes against your 
your will for my life. And God, pour into me everything that you want inside of me that's going to make a difference in my family and in my life and in my community. He said, bring me a bottle. Bring me some salt. Put the salt in the bottle or in the vessel. And then I'm going to scatter it into the water. Now, there was something wrong. They had water. They had land. They had sunshine. They had all the right tools. They had irrigation systems. The problems were these trees that had leaves and looked like trees that were fruitful did not bear fruit. How many know there's a lot of churches with high steeples and stained glass windows and beautiful buildings and people inside those beautiful buildings in tailored garments, but there is nothing inside the bottle. I believe God is wanting to do more than just fill our buildings up with vessels. I believe God's wanting to do more than just build a crowd. I believe God's wanting to do more than that. Today, and, and this church, God has blessed us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, he's blessed us. A few years ago, I looked at a Newsweek magazine cover, and it said, the, ch- the title of the cover on the magazine said, America Returns to Church. That was 10 years ago. But how many of you know that even though it said America has returned to church, my issue is not about how many vessels we've got. My issue is not about who's going to church. My issue is about what they're getting filled with when they get to church. What's inside the vessel? Because even though America is going back to church, it seems to me that the church is going to sleep and they're slumbering as this world is falling apart. We have taken the standards and the ethics and the morality that God has placed in us and it's decreased to where now the world makes a greater impact on the church than the church makes on the world. But what I'm saying is, God, give us some vessels that'll say, fill me, Lord. Fill me with the preserving agent of your spirit and your word until I'm able to speak into this world and to declare and to be the remnant God called me to be and let the church arise and make a difference in this world. Call me an optimist, but I believe the greatest days for the church are yet ahead. Can you say amen if you believe it? Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm David Smith, pastor here at Monroe Church of God, the church that love is building. I pray that today's message was a blessing to you, and I hope that the word of God uh, was placed in your heart, and it'll bring forth a mighty harvest. Allow God to minister to you today. If you don't know the Lord, let me encourage you to call the number at the bottom of your screen, contact us, reach out to us, and let us know that uh, you would like to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. As a matter of fact, you can do that right where you're at today. Call out unto the Lord. Ask him to come into your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. I encourage you to do that today. Just do it right where you're at. Call out unto the Lord. Say, God, I'm a sinner. I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross and to come into my life and redeem me of my sins. Confess to him your sins and receive him into your life and he'll forgive you of those sins even right now. I encourage you to do that. And as you pray that prayer, whatever simple prayer that may be, just call out to the Lord. Let Him know that you want Him to come into your heart and take up residence, and He'll do just that. Then let us know that you prayed that prayer. Give us a call if you'd like to pray with us or for us to pray with you. We'll be glad to do that. All that information is on the screen. We look forward to seeing you next week right here at the same time from the Monroe Church of God. God bless you.